Hey, what up, sluts? This is Taylor, and it is Fallacy Friday. If you enjoy these, please leave a rating. If you don't enjoy these, um, then you should probably click that little red X in the top corner of your screen before you can fritter away any of more goldenly precious time by typing a comment about how much you don't like it, okay? So, get the hell out. It's okay. I'll see you in my next video that you enjoy. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, the fallacy that I've chosen for this week is the false dilemma, otherwise known as the false dichotomy. And essentially, it is when an argument is presented to you wherein it asserts two mutually exclusive alternatives and makes you choose one of them without providing any other options and says that it's either this or this. So essentially, uh, the first premise is either claim X is true or claim Y is true. Uh, the next claim is that claim X is false, and the conclusion is therefore Y is correct. Uh, and anyone with half a brain can e easily see this, although you'd be surprised how many times in political debates or things like that, uh, you'll see this kind of fallacy brought up, and the moderator or the opponents just won't jump on it. So uh, a kind of ridiculous example of this would be, uh, the argument is, if you want Taco Bell to be healthy, you must only serve Brussels sprouts. You don't want to only serve Brussels sprouts, Therefore, Taco Bell cannot be healthy. Now, anyone can see that's immediately ridiculous, because all you have to do to defeat a false dichotomy is present a third option. You can say, well, that's not true, because you could also just make serving sizes smaller, or you could cook in a different kind of oil, or you could use less, uh, or use meat that's not pumped full of hormones their whole life, or what, what have you. It's really easy. Uh, some of them people don't see so clearly. Uh, the most famous false dichotomy, the most, one of the most famous logical fallacies that people still use as a convincing argument is called Pascal's Wager. And essentially what Pascal's Wager asserts uh, is that you either, if you believe in God and you die and there is no God, then you didn't lose anything. You didn't lose anything at all. But if you don't believe in God and you die and there is a God, then you lose everything. You go to hell. You burn forever. So his conclusion is that you may as well believe in God just in case there is a God afterwards. And he uses this, of course, with Christianity and says you, you should believe in the Christian God just in case the Christian God exists. And the reason this is fallacious is because it assumes that there are only two default positions for belief. You can either be a Christian in his world or you can be an atheist in his world. There is nothing else. Now, this, takes, uh, this doesn't take into account the fact that anyone with any religion over the course of any time could use this same argument and replace Christianity with Islam or with Hinduism or with... Uh, ancient Norse gods, or ancient Egyptian gods, or Osiris, anyone you want to say, and uh, the argument works just as well. And so it fails because it, t it does not take into account the fact that numerous belief systems exist, and it's giving you a false dichotomy, a false choice between two mutually exclusive things, and saying you either have to be a Christian or you have to be a non-believer in Christianity, and you may as well just go with Christianity just in case. Well, if I were a Muslim, I could look at that and say, well, that's silly. You don't have to be just a Christian or an, uh, an atheist. You can be a Muslim as well. And so basically, it's just this huge convoluted, uh, I guess you could take the time to make a new wager, but that would be so ridiculous and not make any sense. And that's not even getting into the fact that what kind of God would want you in his heavenly kingdom if you just pretended because you were afraid to believe. Like, that's just kind of silly. So that's one of the most prominent ones. And I've even encountered that argument from people in my, uh, in my daily life before when they want to bring up religion or when I bring up religion or something like that. And it's something they all go back to, but most people, once you explain it to them, uh, they're very, very eager to change their worldview because it's much more logical once you realize uh, the, the fallacy of it, okay? Um, here's another example. Um, Mitt Romney is either a dumbass cockmonger or a faggy douche bandit, okay? Second uh, premise, Mitt Romney is not a faggy douche bandit. Therefore, Mitt Romney is a dumbass cockmonger. Now, see, that's incorrect, because it fails to take into account that he is also a homophobic, xenophobic, mentally deficient, narcissistic, sociopathic, selfish dickbag. You see, they completely forgot that third option, and, that, and that, that really will get you there. You really need to make sure that you understand the full depth of it, and that you uh, can hash out other options and question the person. Um, and basically, that's it. I wanted to keep this one a little bit simple, a little bit shorter. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please let me know. If you have any questions in the comments, I will be happy to answer them if I see them. Um, how to combat this fallacy is very easy. If you find yourself in an argument with someone and they're very hard-pressed about either this 
or this, like either A or B options, and there's no room in between. All you have to do to show that it's incorrect is just present a third option. It's very, very simple. Just like I said with uh, Mitt Romney, is not just a dumbass cockmonger or a faggy douche bandit. That's a false dichotomy. He's also a homophobic racist. See, you can just fill in the blanks right there. And uh, if you find yourself in an argument where you feel like you may be using a false dichotomy, just take a step back and think and try and find a third option there. Now, this isn't to say that all dichotomies are false, mind you. Uh, so... Make sure you take that into account and don't just discount everyone who brings up an A or B uh, contention and write that off as some sort of fallacious uh, uh, argumentation. So that's all I've got to say for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as I said at the beginning of the video, uh, rate or favorite or dance around in your underwear, whatever the hell you want to do. But uh, that's it, and I love you.